Hey, I'm Sweeney Chad, and today I'm going to show you how I built the YF-12 in Kerbal Space Program 2. I even made a stock-guided missile to work along with it. That's right, it got itself right to the target, just like real life. And speaking of real life, the YF-12 was a missile-packing variant of A-12, both of which are the predecessor to the much more famous SR-71 Blackbird. Its purpose was to close with Soviet bombers at the highest speeds of any fighter aircraft ever, and use its AIM-47 Falcon missiles to take them down. We're going to start out by making the YF-12 itself and get to the missiles in a bit. The first thing I'm adding, of course, is the most recognizable feature, the rounded radome in the nose. This is a massive radar to be used with the missiles. And then, of course, we're going to add a little cockpit back there for the FCO, which is one of these guys right here. It's kind of like the YF-12 equivalent of a Rio in an F-14. As you can see, we extended the fuselage out a bit there, and then we're going to add this hypersonic nose cone um, as the start of the chines, which isn't exactly perfect because they're kind of flat on the YF-12, but it looks pretty good if not a bit stubby, so we extend it out a little bit more. We used uh, two of these smaller Mark II and Mark I parts there to just extend it out a tiny bit more, and I think I pretty much nailed the length of the YF-12, which is a little bit shorter than an SR-71 and about the same size as an A-12. Anyway, we grabbed the uh, heaviest wings or the biggest ones because they have the best heat resistance, and this thing is going to need it. And we're going to start out with those little internal wing segments between the fuselage and the engine nacelles. And speaking of the engine nacelles, we have literally every part to make them. Suspiciously similar, if you ask me. And that combined with the new procedural wings makes making uh, anything in the Oxcart Blackbird family extremely easy, since they all have these same kind of parts. Next up, we're making those little chine fin things on the side of the nacelles, which were uh, kind of hard to nail down. And then we had the, uh, I guess, the equivalent of horizontal stabilizers on this. No idea what they actually controlled, but I'm basically using Lamac uh, ailerons. Then we had the vertical stabilizers and it straight up just looks like a swampert. So we naturally uh, tone those down a little bit and once we get them to the proper size, we tilt them inward, which immediately increases our cool factor by 1000. I don't know what it is, but it just makes it look so much cooler when you do that. But don't worry, the fins don't stop there. The YF-12 has no less than three ventral fins. One of them is so big it needs to be folded on landing and takeoff, and that's the one we're working on here. Unfortunately, we don't have any robotic parts, so this is kind of a worrisome part of the build here we need to kind of make it a little bit smaller than real life because we can't fold it in and then we add those two ventral fins which are very uh f14-esque we're now on our like a uh, second f14 reference of the video there's more to come um no idea why the yf12 needs so many ventral fins though i guess they figured that the uh, a12 design needs some extra yaw stability if it was going to be used as a interceptor um, but I think we pretty much nailed the look of all of those ventral fins. The middle one is a bit shorter than I'd like it to be. We might remake this in case we won someday and actually make it fold. We had to shorten it even more <laughs> once we put the landing gear on. And we added a little drag chute there. And now it's time to fully test this thing out and see how it actually flies. And I was quite worried about this. <laughs> and my fears were made reality when I gave it full pitch up and it didn't want to lift off the runway. I mean, it barely did, but something was wrong here. And what it turns out was wrong was our center of lift was far, far, far behind our center of mass. And you're never going to get your nose off the ground if it's too far back there. So we added these chines in the front, which shifted it farther forward, but, you know, it's still not ideal. Those should be a lot closer, but it was serviceable, and we took it out for another flight, which will hopefully go better this time. And it did. We were able to pitch up, and we didn't even have to use maximum uh, pitch authority there to even get it off the ground. So I figured I'd take it for a little test drive here and see how fast we can make it go. And as you can probably see, we've already got a plasma blanket around the craft, so we are really baking here. So fast, in fact, that we actually ended up breaking the record of the YF-12, which was a little over uh, 2,000 miles per hour. Uh, yeah, we went way over that. We went nearly 3,000 miles per hour, 1,300 meters per second, or Mach 3.79 at sea level. But now that we know the plane works, it's time to make the missile. The AIM-47 Falcon, a super long-range air-to-air missile, which would be the only armament of the YF-12. The much more famous AIM-54 Phoenix that the Tomcat carried can trace its heritage directly back to the AIM-47 Falcon right here. As you can tell, they look pretty darn similar. The AIM-54 is just kind of scaled up and uh, the fins are a bit different. Making actual missile recreations was much, much harder in the original game without mods, but as you can tell here in KSP-2, it is very easy now with those procedural wings to get something that looks a lot like a actual missile. We were even able to color it the same way, and I'm super happy with the way that this turned out. Now, of course, it's time to test it out. We packed two missiles this time rather than the three it would have carried, and that's just because we weren't able to do a third little payload bay in the stock game. At least not easily, that is. But we start our engines up and begin the next test flight here. Our goal here is to try to test fire those missiles and see if they properly release from our weapons bay and uh, actually fire and track stuff. Uh, turns out, though, uh, we had a bit of an issue. Well, a bit of an issue is an understatement. 
Uh, after we fired both missiles, they turned into absolute jello, and then we lost complete control of the plane. Turns out there was no Kerbal in there, and the missiles were just uh, flying the plane. So it crashed into the uh, countryside here next to the runway. So yeah, that's a slot issue so we're going to fix that by taking out this fuel section here and turning it into a payload bay so a payload bay within a payload bay then we're just going to pack one aim 47 in there and angle it down so it hopefully drops out of the plane a lot easier uh, so we're going to test this out by going out toward the island runway and then turning around and firing back toward uh, the ksc i'm sure in real life they would really love that me just firing missiles at the ksc for no apparent reason other than testing their uh, their working ability. <laughs> so we release both the payload bays there. It looks kind of weird, admittedly, but it does work because the uh, AIM-47 is able to drop out of there. We quickly switch to it and uh, start seeing if it flies. We have nothing to really track other than the plane that we just left from, so I'm just kind of like manually flying it around and I'm like, hey, what if we go through the little uh, hoop ring that's at the uh, docks here? And uh, we got pretty darn close to actually doing it. Now this thing was very maneuverable, it's just nothing but reaction wheels, fins, and a lot of thrust, so that's not very surprising that it's able to maneuver like this. But we unfortunately uh, just could not get it inside that ring, no matter how hard we tried. But this little missile, this little missile tried its hardest, believe me. It just wasn't doing anything. One thing I do like is how much of an explosion these things make in uh, KSP-2 compared to KSP-1. It actually looks like it had explosives in there. So you might notice that I'm building a plane here. This is going to be generic civilian airliner, and that's exactly what we're going to name it. And this is going to be useful as a target for our missile. At first, we're just going to leave it on the ground here, and then we're going to launch our YF-12, and we'll uh, shoot at it, of course. So we're going to launch it here, and uh, you can see the generic civilian airliner there in the background on the other runway. We're just going to launch, launch it and uh, then turn around here at the island runway like last time, and uh, hopefully successfully fire our missile at it. So here we're just going to uh, release our weapons bays and uh, release the little uh, AIM-47 Falcon. Now we're kind of aiming toward it to hopefully help it out a little bit. We're also going a little bit over Mach 1 and we're going to see just how fast this thing can go and if it can track to its target properly. So the first thing we must do is go into the map view and then find our target which is right there, the generic civilian airliner, and select it as our target. Then we're going to go down to the uh, this indicator right here and set it to point toward target. This should automatically, even if we switch away from it, point toward the target. Now, it isn't the most accurate thing in the world, but this thing went really fast, as you can tell. Uh, it went 800 uh, meters per second, but it didn't really hit the target at all. So I refired the missile and this time took a little more manual control of it, as you can probably tell by me uh, flipping it around and doing Cobras and stuff. Uh, but yeah, it, it worked a little bit better, I guess. I mean, it flew around the uh, airliner in circles until it finally landed a hit on it. I mean, you'd have plenty of time to get away, but this missile would scare the absolute heck out of you. So we referred to the VAB and did some slight modifications to the missile and the way it was launched and stuff. Very slight modifications. And of course, uh, a retake took off our uh, YF-12 here and the exact same routine. We uh, went back toward the island runway and fired our AIM-47. This time, though, I was going to try to put in as little manual... Uh, input as possible to just see the state of the tracking on the missile and since there was basically no compensation for gravity and this doesn't have much wing area to produce lift it just gradually gradually got lower and lower until it finally crash landed somewhere around the docks so yeah instead of making some kind of complicated system to compensate for gravity we just stuck a bunch more reaction wheels and it took some fuel out to increase the thrust to weight so it'd go even faster, and then put some all moving control surfaces as the fins back there. And with that done, it's time for a real test fire. Yeah, I figured those shots of the YF-12 in flight pretty much spoke for themselves. But now that the Falcon missile is nearing its target, we're compensating slightly for gravity uh, and the lack of lift in this just by nosing it up a tiny bit as it goes along. And it turns out that's all you need for a nearly perfect hit. Well, we hit the wing 
and completely obliterated the missile. Not so much the aircraft, even though it does look like we absolutely destroyed that thing. But like I said, this is a self-guided missile, not a partially self-guided missile. So we're gonna go a completely automatic run here and just kind of fly over it as the missile goes along to see what it does. And this was probably my favorite shot of the day. That rapidly moving default name three is our Falcon missile. And we're gonna have to stay within around three kilometers of it to keep it from, uh, you know, completely unloading from the game since it's flying through the air. Uh, the airliner there is going to stay spawned in because it's on the ground. And as you can see, it's targeting right to the airliner. And I wasn't sure whether or not, but it looked like to me, it made a perfect hit on the airliner completely by itself. So we just fired this missile, selected our target, and it hit it. Pretty darn cool. But this was an air-to-air -air missile. And as you can see by the absolute monstrosity on the screen before you, we're going to try to do that. This is one way to do a, a completely stock dogfight in either the stock KSP-1 or in KSP-2. You just launch all your crafts together and disconnect them mid-flight. Put them on around the same flight trajectory so you don't have to worry about intercepting. And also, well, you can't launch two crafts. The second you swap away from one and try to launch another, it's going to delete it mid-air. So we fire a missile and try it out in an actual, well, not dogfight, but an actual intercept scenario. Since this would be playing kind of the role of a Soviet bomber. But you know it's a civilian airliner. But it's full of Kerbals and their lives only matter if it's part of the mission contract to bring them back alive. So we're going to shoot it anyway. And at first it seems like our missile performs pretty darn well. I did manually assist it, I just can't help myself because if I see if it's straying off course I'm going to have to adjust it a little bit. It's just not like me not to. But as you can see something happened to our plane there. Yeah one of the engines fell off. That's a certified Boeing moment if you ask me. So naturally we would fire another missile at it in its time of need. And uh, this one didn't perform so well. Yeah, and this is one of probably a dozen or more launches that just didn't perform well at all. As you can see, it would get near the target, slip kind of under it, aim up, and then shoot right past it. Yeah, it would kind of go in between the tail and the wings. Just had no luck with it whatsoever. But <laughs> on this flat, we were literally dodging engines as they just fell off the plane for absolutely no reason. Once again, Boeing moment. But uh, yeah, finally it had one engine of the four left and we did get a hit on it by manually kind of guiding in. Turned out that was a trick. But even if we didn't manually guide it, once in a while a missile would hit as you can see. That was probably my favorite hit of the day because I wasn't expecting it to happen. It was like a dozen into it. But what is that in the left hand corner? Is that? Yes, that's me. That's me and my flat stick. That's how I record these videos. And I'm experimenting with doing a flat stick cam for future videos. Uh, I was thinking about just putting up a cam of me in the corner on landings. Uh, per the more perilous, the better uh, of me controlling the flat stick. This was a very normal landing. And as you can see, there wasn't much going on. I promise you the flat stick goes a little bit more crazy whenever I'm maneuvering around trying to uh, get through something. But right now it's just a pretty normal flat. And I'm just testing out the whole flat stick cam idea to see if it will work for future videos that will have most definitely much more interesting uh, maneuvers and stuff to be done. But right now we're just gradually bringing the stick back as we approach slowly lowering our vertical uh, speed here until finally we uh, almost kind of float there and then uh, bring it right down to the runway. Now I tried to do a little bit of a flare but I was being careful not to flare too much as it would just take right back off into the air because we are coming in pretty hot here just to make sure that we have enough control over the plane since it really is pretty heavy for the amount of lift here. So yeah, really safe and really nice landing there. What do you think about me uh, putting flat stick footage in future videos, probably the aircraft only series and stuff like that? I think it'd be pretty interesting. I, I couldn't do it all the time, but I think it'd be pretty darn cool. So if you like this video, make sure to check out the playlist right here, which uh, has a bunch of other aircraft recreations. This used to be what I did constantly in KSP, and it's good to get back to doing these videos again, uh, just to take a break from the regular stuff, which we will have a aircraft only video out next week for you, don't worry. But in the meantime, check out that playlist. And as for right now, this is Spoonie Chad, out.